<clears throat> Hello. All right. <laughs> That's <so> bad. <laughs> All right, little update before I uh, cut to the video. I originally dropped my the front of my Pontiac, the suspension, by stepping the control arms using three inch spacers. It turned out to be very unsafe, so I undid that. I highly suggest you never do that again, or <laughs> no one else ever do it again. Um, I do have a previous video about it. If you wanna watch that, you can. I will include a short clip on how I uh, removed the rivets in case someone doesn't feel like watching that other video. Uh, so I removed the rivets, removed the, or added the spacers, drove it around, realized it was unsafe, came back in, removed the spacers, uh, cut the coils, put the control arms back together, dropped it, and took it for a cruise. Pretty simple. Um, again, I will repeat, do not step your control arms unless you are running a very large wheel not the tire, the wheel, the actual steel part of the wheel. If uh, if you can drop your scrub line below the control arm when you step it, all the power to you. I didn't want to change the steel wheels that are on my car, so I left the 15s. 15 inch wheels from the center of the spindle, 15 divided by two, seven and a half. So I was only able to drop the uh, control arm seven and a half inches from the center of the spindle. Don't do it. Thanks. Okay, so what I have learned while lowering this 54 Pontiac. So first off, this is a 54 Laurentian, so it sits on a 54 Bel Air frame. It's the same width, same length, everything, all the same mounts, all the same mechanical parts. So the only thing that's different about this car and a Bel Air would be the aesthetic trim, the grill, the interior, Really, that's about it. Oh, and the powertrain, of course. It's ha it has a 239 Pontiac flathead. So, what I learned. I learned that I have literally dropped this thing as much as I absolutely could on stock components. So, it has a stock front end, a stock rear end, and it has stock size tires, stock size wheels. So, it has a th three inch block in the rear and it has a three inch stepped control arm in the front so that maintains all the same suspension components same spring rate in the front same feel in the back i did not cut the bump stops in the back so you do feel it hit i cut the bump stops in the front but that didn't do a thing because it's literally sitting on the bump stops um it looks pretty badass. I think I love the way it looks. The way that I did the stepped control arms though, um, they're actually rubbing on the wheel. So what I'll do is I'll actually post a picture of that. This thing that I'm using to record can't really, can't really go this way very easily, but so this guy right here, that is rubbing the tire. So when I turn, my wheel hits that. So what I'm gonna to have to do is build a new lower spring perch for that guy and uh, provide clearance. I probably could cut that corner off, but I really don't want to uh, screw with the integrity of this thing and the way it was originally designed. Well, after I dropped it, um, the lowering spacers that I put in dropped the control arm lower bracket way too close to the ground. Very unsafe. So I'm undoing what I had originally done. I'm actually gonna cut the coils. Um, so previously, drilling out all the rivets um, actually saved me a lot of time because now if I want to remove the coils and change out the shocks, all that good stuff, all I have to do is undo those six bolts. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna take out those uh, spacers and uh, cut down the coil, drop it, and I'm gonna replace all those spacers with, again, 
uh, three eighths, grade eight, uh, fine thread uh, hardware. So um, that's what I'm doing right now. spacers and I have cut one and a half coils off that side. Now it's sitting with, oh, with one and a half coils and about one inch of bump stop removed. It's sitting with only about one inch of travel left between the bump stop and the uh, uh, frame. So. That's about as much as you want to do. So one and a half coils off the factory spring and cut off an inch of your uh, bump stop. So that'll drop that down. So I'll measure that again <clears throat> with, what do we got here? We're at 23 and three eighths. So it is sitting about an inch higher than my previous 
cut for my previous spacer install that looked like absolute crap and was extremely unsafe. So I'll, uh, I'll do the same thing on the other side and I'll record it and I'll show you what I did so you can actually see what I'm doing here. So uh, let's get to that and then this old girl will be ready to cruise safely.
All right, so there's two sides to this coil spring. There's the flat side, and then there's the, essentially it's kind of like an unwound side. So that is the lower portion that can sits in the control arm. So I'll, so I'll show you that part. So that is the lower portion of the control arm. So this spring, you see the shape of this? It kind of has like a coiled groove. This coil spring sits right in that spot so it doesn't allow it to rotate. So if I were to use the wrong side, it doesn't sit flat, it sits all screwed up and it can rotate in there. So what we want to do is cut off the correct side. So we're going to cut off this end. So on the previous one, uh, from the research that I've done, when guys are going for like a two inch drop, they cut off uh, one coil and you can, uh, you can actually measure that. The thing is these, these coils are uh, equal distribution between all the, all the coils. So when you cut it, you're putting the same amount of weight on a, on a less, on a smaller number of coils. So it's going to compress faster and it's going to ride rougher. So that's why guys talk about changing springs because it'll be a harder spring with a bigger gap because when you have these smaller ones, it's the same amount of weight. And what's going to happen is your spring is actually going to touch and squeeze. So we don't want that, but there's nothing I can avoid. So if I want to drop it other than avoiding or then ordering new springs, which is what I'm going to do, but uh, I have the dimensions off these currently. These are like I measured before. These are 14 and, a, and three quarters of an inch tall. That's uh, uh, non-compressed, 14 and three quarters. So we want to take two and a half to three inches off this to get it to ride where we want it. So I'm going to take, just like the other one, I took what equates to, let's do this again here. If you look at this, about one and a half coils. See that? A full coil plus a half a coil. So I'm cutting off one and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut off a, uh, how am I going to do this? I'm going to cut off half a coil first, and then I'm going to cut off the remaining full coil. So let's go do that right now. Where are my safety glasses? Got the cut off disc.
did this. This is so stupid. Anyways, yeah, I think this is the one. So it's one and a half coils. That is correct. So I was just making sure I didn't cut off too many coils because that would have sucked really, really bad. I tripped out for a second. I lost track of this one. So I thought that maybe I hadn't cut one and a half coils previously on the last one, which I had. So let's have a little look here. So that one would equate to, that was this guy here. I've cut, yeah, that's this one right here. Perfect. So that means this is this one. Okay, so going back to this guy here. So what I did essentially is I went from uh, that guy and I went this to this one and I skipped one and I went to that. So that is one and a half coils. Two would have been all the way back around to cutting the second one here. So I've cut half of a coil and I'm gonna go all the way back around to this one. So that'll be the one and a half. Verifying, making sure, measure twice, cut once. Let's throw a couple magnets on this. Voila, another coil, one and a half, right there. So, now to make sure it sits in the pocket correctly, rotate this little girl. And she sits. She locks in, she's good. So I'm gonna go put this back in the car, reinstall it, drop her down, torque the nuts, Call her good, take it for a cruise. That's the plan. Alrighty. We are ready to reinstall this old girl. Oh, let's uh, so I don't know if I said it before, I think I did, but I'm using grade eight, three eighths, fine thread bolts and the appropriate hardware. And uh, the place where I bought these here in Canada, uh, I don't know if they're a, a, like a chain distributor, but it's called the Bolt Supply House. So these guys actually gave me a printout and it shows you all the torque specs for each size of nut and bolt and everything and the thread. So I know I need to torque these to 55 foot pounds once I have them all in. 55 foot pounds on six fasteners on this is a crazy amount of holding force. So I'm not concerned about these guys being on there whatsoever. I'm pretty confident those will be pretty strong. So I have already installed the other side and I'll, uh, I will demonstrate how I did it on this one. Okay, so make sure that's still on there. Shit. That's gonna be annoying. That's gonna be a challenge. So what I did on the previous one, spun it around, flat, flat side of the spring, goes into the upper pocket, the shock tower, whatever you wanna call it. I call it a shock tower. Um, that's what it's called on newer cars anyways, I believe. I take a long pry bar, I put it on the top of the control arm. And I actually slide it across through the spring to the other side. Well, let's try rotating this old girl. See if I get it to go. There we go. Now that's gonna hold the spring in place. So I take this. And use some of my hardware.
in here, throw a nut on it. It's kind of a dick around, but I'll get her. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Throw it in. Loosely hold it up. So it's way easier to see from the other side. This is what I'm going to do. Oh my gosh, I'm about to lose my mind. Okay, breathe. Usa, <sighs> usa. Come on. using nylock uh, bolts so they have so they lock themselves I don't use, need to use a lock washer
Okay, that is on there. Now if I let this down, Slide this over, and then lift her back up. Show you what I was dealing with. Right here. That is the bottom of the shock. So previously when it was when the control arm was sitting down, there wasn't enough threads on that. So now I'll be able to get it on there. And where the hell did that washer go? Hmm. Did I lose my washer? There it is. Okay. So the rubber bushings on there. Um, and then I have the steel washer for the bushing that goes on there, which is chewed to shit. So I'm gonna have to put a new one on. And then there's a rounded edge on this bolt. So I'm gonna put that on there. Sorry, on the nut. There we go. So I'm gonna thread that on there. Oh, fuck. The threads on this are just beat to shit from the 70 years of driving down the road. So I'm gonna have to use my impact gun again. Spinning up top, maybe. Oh no, it's gone. She is on there. She is good. Perfect. Okay. Now, let's torque those real quick and then, uh, and then call her good. I'm letting the car down.
Oh, I'm done. That is it. She is lowered. Alrighty, let's see how it looks. We are going to drop this old girl down once and for all. I'm gonna have to clean off these white walls when I'm done because they are getting filthy. moment of truth. I'm about to drop this old girl and we're about to see how she looks. She's 
You got travel. And she is looking good. Let's measure. Let's do what we got for ride height. 23 and 5 eighths, approximately. 23 and 5 eighths. Twenty-three and three quarters. Sorry, that was wrong. I was... Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. Twenty-three and three quarters. I was reading twenty-three and seven eighths. Closer to twenty-three and three quarters on each side. It's got right height. Let's back her up. See how she does. I think that'll have to do for ride height, for now. She's sitting not low enough, but I think it looks pretty clean. It looks pretty simple, pretty old school. She looks pretty nice, I think. For what I paid for this and the little work that I've put into it, I gotta say, this is a pretty sweet old ride. I got the the sweet patina roof racks. So these are actually the original quick and easy, but sweet patina owns them now. But I think this car is looking pretty, pretty dope. I'm cool, I'm cool the way it looks. Let's have a little eye here and see what it looks like without those uh, fender skirts. Fender skirts or no fender skirts?
kind of thinking no fender skirts myself. So she's running a little better. She's got a new generator. I've played with the carb a little bit, got the carb to run a little bit better. Front's dropped, rear's dropped, some new fuel lines. Um, all new wiring on the inside here. Well, not wiring, but new electrical uh, lights and all that stuff. So let's, uh, let's see if I can take this old girl for a cruise. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but we'll try. The headlights on this old car are actually very, very good, which is surprising. It's still the six volt system. pretty loud in here. I do have all the windows up and uh, the heat is on. But transmission in this thing is pretty loud. Transmission in the rear end. Definitely not the engine, these engines. 